This is Kuchub from Swastone, and today I want to talk to you just about some uh, blade styles because there's not a lot of information about flake over grind and what that is in fog. I mean, there's a lot of information about flint napping, but not necessarily in knife making. I've been a percussion flint napper for about 10 years, um, and I've been making knives professionally for probably about five or six years or something like that. And um, it's a totally different art. If you're a store or if you're a person that's looking over the internet and doesn't know a lot about these things, I can go to di different styles because I'm sure you've seen a lot of them. Um, or if you haven't, um, this will be really beneficial to you too. But I want to go into edge work and more so about how my knives are made in the time and the, and the thought process that I put into making the different flaking patterns that I have and the different edge work. So um, we'll get to it. So percussion flint napping is hitting a raw piece of uh, stone with a rock, with an antler, or with a piece of copper, or with a, uh, even some people have used wood before, like hardwood, um, steel. But anyway, there's a lot of there's a lot of videos on percussion flint napping. But anyway, you leave these big flake scars and stuff like this. But the edge itself is wildly different than more modern tools usually. So this is what I started doing is taking a, a you know a piece of stone and hitting another piece of stone and then be able to create these what's called a biface two faces like this and this is what would be a preform to a knife blade a long time ago you know um you know before rock saws and things like that um and so you can see different examples of it and see you can tighten up the flaking patterns and get them a little bit better you can see that edge too see how um lenticular it is See, it's it, it's uh, perfectly lenticular, no matter which way that you look at it, and that's and that's uh, the art of bifacing is to make it lenticular. You can see the edge work on this too. Is uh, is how tight it can actually be, uh, just by refining and refining and refining. Um, you can get into a point like this where you could take smaller tools and peel these more uh, obl parallel oblique flakes. Off and get the edge real sharp you see and that's the kind of edge that I try and emulate with my knives is this really 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 sharp edge right here and you can see how thick this blade is I mean it's a really really thick blade and and that's uh, something that I wanted to bring into my knife making too is how can I make them thick and still make them sharp like this um, and uh, and that's why I just love the old primitive look and you'll and you'll see uh, with my knife plates as we get into it. But I'm going to show you some more modern examples of rock saw usage and, and flake over grind. And flake over grind, well, I'll, I'll get into it here in a second. Now, flake over grind is the art of taking a, they call it fog. So whenever you see fog or something like that, they'll say percussion or fog or no fog. And talking about whether or not they use rock saws to make slabs first. Because I could take a rock that's, um, this big and I could slab it up and turn it into 50 arrowheads say I paid a lot of money for the rock you know I could use every portion of it as opposed to beating it into rubble and only getting a few blades out of it with percussion flint napping. When you're percussion flint napping you have to thin the piece you have to uh, you have to shape it thin it and then you have to uh, sharpen it and shape it and all these different things when you slab a piece of rock using a rock saw a big oil rock saw or a little water rock saw or something like that you act, it, you actually have a, a thin slab it's already thinned it's you know you don't have to do all that other work that you normally have to do um, when you're when you're doing that now that's some people think that's cheating but I mean you go out and purchase some rock saws and see how much cheating it is when you have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for to do some of these blades that that uh, we do with this so it's not cheating it's just different they're two different art forms and and that's something that I want to express too but anyway so you can take a rock saw and you can cut these little tiny slabs and you can see this ribbon flaking in here this is what people are after a lot of times when they're doing a uh, flake over grind and I like this I like this when I'm making arrowheads but as you can see Look how, how extreme, extremely thin that is, okay? And you can peel these ribbon flakes off of a thicker slab, too. But what happens is, when you get into some of these, um, and you can see a blade like this. This is a big slab, and um, this is a piece of silver sheen from Oregon. It looks like gunmetal. Um, but you see the edge is real sharp and nice, but then again, the blade is really thin. I mean, I could take this and snap this in half to make a knife blade out of something like this. I mean, and then charge somebody 120 or 130 dollars for a blade. I mean, you're just asking for trouble. They're going to break it on the way home, especially if you had it on your on your counter to show. Man, it's just it would snap so easy. It's it's this triangle that happens with the art form. It's about width to thickness ratio. So if you want a good flaking pattern, 
and you want a thick blade, you're going to have blocky edges. If you want a sharp blade and a nice flaking pattern, you're going to have a really thin blade. So you can't have all three. You can't have thick, sharp, and and a perfect ribbon flaking pattern. All right, so now I'm slabbing rocks, and I'm able to retouch all these ed edges and make an archaic-looking blade that um, that I just I just absolutely am uh, pretty proud of. And I really and I really love this style too. How can I take rock saws and mass produce archaic blades and, and reproduce the things that I that I've done in the past with percussion flint napping? And percussion flint napping is by far the difficulty level of percussion flint napping. It took me a lot longer to learn how to do that than it did to learn how to um, flake over grind. But over the years of doing this uh, this knife making, um, it, it has taken me a long time to really find a, a niche in my own style with it. Um, so that's something I really attribute to um, to being able to do percussion flint napping beforehand. But anyway, so with my knives you get this archaic kind of a flaking pattern look this parallel oblique is uh is what i just love i absolutely love that and that that's found on percussion knives when you look down it you get this uh archaic look to it and anybody that knows this art uh, or knows percussion flint napping can look at this and tell that i spent probably more time than most retouching my blades to get this sharp and the way that this is and have this wave pattern to it uh, which is what you find on arrowheads and things like that, it takes a lot of retouching. So I retouch every single quadrant of every single blade. And some guys would probably think I'm ridiculous for spending that much time on it, but I do because I really, really care about the edge work and what it looks like. And still be sturdy enough, see, nice and thick, still be sturdy enough to take a smaller fall. Or, um, you know, I've, I've even dro I've dropped them for four feet before and had them land on the edge like that and just chip the edge. Um, so... That's what you're getting when you get a blade from me, and um, I put a lot of time into the edge work on these things. So. so I hope that was helpful. So if you were thinking about buying knives or something like that on the internet, and maybe you have a little bit of ground to stand on, a basis for how this stuff is made, and what you're exactly looking at when you see uh, other people's art and you see my art and things like that. Um, so if you have any other questions about this kind of stuff, or we want to talk rocks, or just want to talk about um, flint napping or anything like that, you can always just contact me. So there's not a lot of information out there about knife making. I think probably rightfully so because I mean this is kind of a secret hidden art which is what I really love about that. That's why I don't share a lot of information about exactly how my uh, process is and how I make them. A lot of people don't either. You won't find videos on how to do this and maybe that keeps uh, you know people from running sweatshops with this kind of stuff. So usually when you see this stuff you're getting it from somebody that knows how to do it and that knowledge was passed down from somebody else that knew how to do it. If you want to check out more of our art, you can go to www.swastone.com. That's www.swaxstone.com. Or you can, we're at Swastone on Facebook and Instagram. Hit the like button if you like this video and you want to see more. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching.